Hey everyone out there on this cold and miserable day. Hope you're all doing really well. Hopefully we won't be in um, lockdown for quite too much longer. We've got another face paint workshop for you today. Now I'm all on my own, Paul's in here with me today, um, which means that if you have questions and that sort of thing, please do ask them, um, comment away. However, I may not be able to um, type the answers back, I'll just have to answer them. Also, just bear in mind that uh, there is just a tiny, tiny delay um, with live videos. So when I'm talking, there's a, oh, I think it's a good sort of 30 seconds or so um, before it actually comes up. So your comment might be um, a little bit lower, a little bit slower. Okie dokie, so today we're gonna have a bit of fun. What I thought I would do for you is, um, is just do some really, really simple um, uh, face paints for you. So just some really, really sort of basic um, uh, designs. These are ones that the kids can do. Um, they're ones that you'll be able to do um, uh, at home and uh, hopefully you'll really enjoy them. So we're gonna get started. Um, I hope everyone's having fun with these videos. Please give us feedback. Let us know if there is you know, other things that you'd like to learn. Um, to be honest, we're getting a little bit stuck with <laughs> what, um, uh, what we should keep teaching. So if there, uh, <laughs> if there is things that you'd like to know, please let me know um, and give us some ideas as to other things that you'd like um, us to teach. Okie dokie, so we'll get started. Today, we're gonna play with a couple of very, very popular designs. So these are designs that everyone asks for, um, and you can guarantee that you'll need to do them at some stage or another. So stick around, we're gonna play with Spider-Man, Batman, and then a rainbow butterfly. Now these are all my designs, like my uh, version or my style of doing it, um, of doing those particular designs. There's lots and lots and lots of, especially something as popular as these designs, there's so many different ways that you can do them. This just happens to be uh, the way that I do them. So if I was out doing a job somewhere or face painting these particular designs, these would be the ones, this would be how I would do them. Um, please follow along. Have other ones, that other sort of designs or things that you can do. And we're gonna get started, we're gonna have some fun. Okay, so the very, very first one we're going to do is Spider-Man. Spider-Man is so popular. I don't know why he's so popular, to be honest. Um, it's a very simple design, but my goodness, there was a lot of kids that asked for this one. <laughs> there is so many, it's crazy. So we're gonna start with Spider-Man, and then we're gonna do Batman, and then a rainbow butterfly. So stick around, please ask questions, let me know what you're thinking. Um, show me how you do your um, designs actually. We love to see sort of other options and other ways of doing them. That's always really, really great. And uh, let's go. Okie dokie, so Spider-Man is, there's, as I said before, there's so many different ways of doing it. This is the way that I do. So the first thing that I will do is I'll grab, first of all, for Spider-Man, I use three colors. Now there is other ways that you can do this if you wanted to. Um, I personally use three colors. I use red, black, and white. Um, but I've also seen some really, really great designs. And instead of using black, it actually uses a metallic blue, which is also a really cool way of doing it. I'm gonna do it very with the simple one for now though. Okay, so the first thing I do is I spray my sponge just like so. Now the reason that I spray my sponge instead of dunking it in water is because then I get a nice even sort of dispersion of water rather than it being like saturated or something because we don't want it to be saturated then the paint's gonna go everywhere. So I sprayed my sponge in water. I'm gonna pick up my white. This particular white is from Fusion. It's their prime white. But for this particular design, you really don't have to use like a, a specialized white, you just need it to be white. 
Um, this goes over the eyes. Now, if you want to, you can skip this part. If you are working with, um, especially a really younger kid, don't worry about going over the eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Now I'm dabbing rather than wiping, because see if I wipe, even on this, I get like a really streaky sort of thing, but if I dab, then I get a much more even um, and, and more, you know, nicer thing of paint. Now you'll notice that I'm not being neat at all with the white, and the reason being is because we're going, going to go over it with the red anyway, so you don't have to be neat and tiny, you just need to cover up this area. And if you're using good paints, then that red is going to go straight over the top and you won't be able to see how messy it was underneath anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so it's nice and even. There we go, two big white splodges for my eyes. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is my red. Now, if you're just starting out, if you're just kind of learning how to face paint and that sort of thing, what I suggest is actually use a brush for the red because that way you've got that little bit more control if you're able to get that nice, um, even mask happening. So, I've got my nice big wide brush. This is the Heart Face Art range. And the red I'm using is from Oh, I don't know, it doesn't tell me. Um, huh, there you go. Okay, well it must be, it's Asia, which means that um, it must be either uh, fusion or global. But how weird, it doesn't actually have, doesn't tell me. Hey Paul, where's this one from? Yeah, you don't know what either, do you? Okay, well we know it's either global or fusion. Um, and that's because uh, they're the only brands that work with that um, uh, a CEO gel. Okay, so the Spider-Man's eyes is the most important part because that's what's kind of recognisable about the Spider-Man apart from, of course, um, the actual web. So if you were using a brush, then you sort of do like a, a triangle part, so up like that, and then you can shape it down and around, like so. And then fill the rest out. Now when you get really, really good at this shape, you'll actually be able to do that with a sponge. So that's what I do, rather than using um, a brush, I'd grab my sponge. Actually, I like the, um, uh, the rounded part. Okay, so I would use um, a sponge and I will sort of wipe the shape and then dab my colours around. And as I said, once you get kind of used to that shape and you know the shape that you're trying to do, um, you can actually do it just straight with the sponge and you don't need to worry about uh, lining it out with a brush first. <laughs> it's so much harder on a, a sheet like this. <laughs> We'll just line that up a little bit more. We'll even it out on this side. So you see what I mean about not needing that white to be perfect? Because my red has gone straight over the top and it's, it's actually really unnecessary um, to worry about making that red as perfect as possible. I'll show you another secret of face painting, by the way. If you've done what I've done and gone all the way around your face, just wipe it clean. Look at that. Is this the baby light? And we can tend that I was um, nice and neat to begin with. The other thing that you can do, which is really cool, um, if you're working out on a job and you suddenly realise that you've made a bit of a, a, uh, a mistake, grab your baby light on the back of your brush like this and then you can get a really smooth line just around the edge, like so. Just to get that really smooth line happening, um, just in case you know you might have messed up, or 
or want something to be that bit neater or tighter on the outside. Okay, there we go. So we've got our red hat meat. And because I'm a perfectionist, I'm just going to neaten up that edge there. This is a beautiful red. Big fire engine red. Okay, cool. How's that looking? We've got the white around the eyes and then our bright fire engine red. Okay, the next thing that I do is pick up a nice smooth brush. So I want a brush that I have a lot of control with. I don't want it to be, um, you know, really huge because the thing about Spider-Man is that if you do nice little neat lines, you'll actually find it looks much, much nicer than if you were to have like big thick lines. Um, I have seen this done with uh, a flat brush before, like a small flat brush. You actually get a really nice effect. Um, so give that a go if you wanted to try something different. Okay, I'm wetting my brush. Now I'm going to do a standard Spider-Man. So I am going to use black. This is Diamond FX black. Diamond FX has the best black. If you're after a really solid, solid, good quality black, always go with Diamond FX. It's a uh, European. Um, which means it's standard to really high. Okay, so the first thing that I always do is I outline my eyes. Like so. And then I find my centre part of the, um, the head. So for me, my centre is about here. And I'm going to draw a line coming down like so. And then I'm going to do another line and I'm going to kind of match up my eye. See how I've got this, um, I guess, eyebrow part? I'm going to draw that all the way up. And that way it looks nice and neat as well. Okay, then I can come down the sides. One. And just draw some nice little neat lines. Now, if you wanted to, um, and depending on how you want to do your Spider-Man, how um, neat and tidy it is, um, how much room you've got with your child's face, you might decide to come all the way down here and go over it as well. I personally don't. Um, and there's a lot, a lot of reasons of why I leave that. One of the main reasons is because normally this design is for little kids and they tend to be eating or, you know, messing around or something like that. And it's just gonna mess up that area. So I just don't worry about it. I just leave that area altogether. Um, the other reason why I leave over the mouth is because it's not even. You know, it's not an even part of the face, which honestly makes it really hard to get it nice and straight. So I just don't even bother. I just leave it all together. I've really messed that up there. <laughs> with face painting um, to mess something up you know if you've got something that you go not really happy with for how that turned out the great thing about painting is that you can just fix back up again and uh, that's what, what a really awesome thing about face painting as well is that it, we're not looking for perfection you no know, and we're not looking for you to be the most amazing artist in the world and that's because if you do make something up, just fix it up again. And there we go, second chance. Okay, now we've got our lines happening this for uh, Spider-Man, we've got our straight lines. Um, I'm now going to draw the web part, and the way that I draw the web part is just little neat lines like this. And that's something that you can actually practice at home as well, in getting that really neat, consistent neat to see. Um, I start with going from web to web, or from uh, line to line. And you see, I'm actually taking my time to match it up. So this line lines up with that one, which lines up with that one. Um, and the reason for that is because it, it's realistic. You know, that's how actual spiders draw their webs, is, or draw their webs, <laughs> make their webs. 
is the, um, the lines do actually match up. And you'll see that I'm giving it just a, a little bit of um, a, a circular as I'm coming across. And that's so that that way my, well, I mean, technically it's so that the web has that little bit of perception. Um, but the, um, the layman's answer is that it looks better. And there we go. And that's a pretty cool looking Spider-Man. Now, if you wanted to, you can absolutely then go more. Okay, so take a screenshot now of this. That's a pretty awesome Spider-Man. I know a lot of kids who will be thrilled with that. And we can stop there if we want to. Or we can keep going that little bit further and do that bit extra. The first thing we can do is pop some sparkles across. And if I do it now, it's more going to stick to the black line. I can give a spider in here, remembering that spiders have a body a head, which is just a little circle, and then they have eight legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little legs coming off. The other thing that we could do if we wanted to is that we could give it um, some cool looking highlights. And you can do that either in um, a white or I'm actually going to use a silver because I think it's really cool. This is the Diamond Effect Silver. So I'm just um, working up my silver. And when you're doing highlights, the end of the game is kind of less is more. So to give you a, you know, a very, very quick kind of um, art lesson, Highlights are from a light, you know, it's so in your head Picture a light coming from one direction Which means that light is coming from this side and then shadows will be on the other side Which means if you're doing a highlight just do it on the side that the light will be coming from So just for the sake of this now, I'm going to pretend This letter here, that's going to be my fake light source as such which means that if the light is coming this way, then I'm only going to put highlights on the parts that that would reach. So it would kind of reach along here. Let's see, it would reach there. It would reach a little bit over there. I definitely get a little bit of the spider legs happening. It would only be on this side because if I had um, it on the other side as well, like if I had it, um, say, over here, well, that's a long way for light to be reaching, so it wouldn't quite look as well. And there we go. Spider-Man with some highlights. I'll show you that in white as well, just so that... Um, you can see the difference. The silver actually looks really, really great um, on skin. It's a little bit tougher um, on a, a practice mat like what we've got now. Yeah, that's come up a lot better on the practice mat. Um, I think you'll find on skin uh, the silver will just add that bit of sophistication. And there we go, there's a Spider-Man with some, um, some highlights. We'll add a few more sparkles, because you know, everything needs sparkles. And there's a Spider-Man that you can do at home. Do we love that? Good, glad. Um, what I'm using, by the way, because I know that some people have asked, uh, it's actually, it's brand new to the face paint shop. It's the, um, the Tag Body Art uh, Practice Faces. 
And what's really cool about it is that when you're finished, it does just wipe clean and, and clean, clean too. Um, some practice spaces are really, really good and they're very realistic, but how oh, about probably like the, the third or fourth time that you wipe it clean with particular colours, they ain't coming really off again. <laughs> Um, these ones are great, they really do. You can see that that has gone, that's underneath. So that's completely clean now, which is really cool. That's just baby wipes, by the way. I'm not using anything special, I'm not using um, a soap cleaner or anything like that. I've literally just used some baby wipes. Okay, we're gonna move along. So the next one we're gonna do is Batman. So, for my Batman, um, what I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use these ones. I'm going to use some silver and white, I've got the rainbows and the reds and stuff for now. Of course, black. Okay, so grab out these sort of colours. And I'll just give a clean paper underneath so that, um, you can see that that bit better. Hmm. Easier said than done. <laughs> okay, we're good. Looking good again? Yeah, cool. Okay, there we go, nice and clean. Okay, so Batman. Um, for those who are uh, true to the um, the Batman, I don't know, spirit, I suppose, <laughs> there is, I think at last count, there's something like 40 or, or 50 um, Batman designs. Like there's, and I don't mean like as in face paint designs, because I'm sure there's thousands. What I mean is that the actual shape of the bat has changed over the years um, and changed quite dramatically. So the Batman that I do, um, I think it's like, you know, a, a, the, the Batman from the 90s. Um, it's a really recognisable Batman. It's also really easy to get that shape, um, you know, looking really good. So that's the one that I happen to do. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is grab a split cake, which I know sounds odd, but you'll see why in a second. Um, I'm going to use this blue one. So I'm just wetting up, wetting my uh, tag flat brush over here. This blue one, oh, I think it's a custom made one actually, it is. I think this is one of our Winter Wonderland blues. Okay, just loading that up. And what I'm going to do is just put a, like a half moon shape across the forehead. And you can use any slip cake you like for this one. I happen to grab this blue one because I know it's going to be nice and contrasting. Um, but I usually pick up uh, like a sunset-y looking one or something like that. Okay, cool. We'll let that dry a little bit. Um, on skin, this dries a lot quicker, by the way. Okay, now I'm going to grab my brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of do a, an outline of the Batman. And follow along with me. The first thing I do is draw the actual shape part, which is um, not difficult. However, once you've got that shape in your head, then it makes everything else a lot easier. So I start with a M here between the eyes, and I try and make that nice and even. Um, and the reason being is because that's the focus point. You know, like psychology-wise, that's like the place people look at. Is that M there. Okay, so everyone's drawing their M right there in the centre. Okay, the next part is a little um, loopy part. And this is going to be the, um, the, well, for me, it's the right wing. So it goes up like that. And then I'm going to bring this down from the very top. I'm going to bring it down past the forehead and come down to, I guess, um, the bottom of the nose. 
Okay, I do that on the exact same on the opposite side and I try my best to make it look nice and even. Of course, it's tricky to get that as as even as um as you can, but just try your best. Okay, so now we've got this shape happening. At the bottom, we've got these two little hooks here. Um, again, on like a bit of a, a curvy, rather than just going straight up and down, I'm going to try and make it a little bit of a curve. And I go up, and then underneath the nose down, and then up, and underneath the nose down again. Okay. So there's a Batman shape, and I'm just going to make that straighter. Okay, there we go. So that's a Batman shape. It's a, it's a recognisable Batman shape. Um, if you were working with um, little kids, I would probably, you, you can actually just kind of leave just more so the outline, then fill it all in. Um, and the reason being is because it's a lot of black. And even though this is a really good quality face paint, it's still a lot of black. It's still a lot of black to try and um, get off again for mum and dad. So, generally speaking, you'll find kids are pretty happy with just the outline. However, um, if you are charging or something like that, you probably want to do that bit extra. So few different options. You can either grab yourself a brush and get a big wide brush like this and fill it in, and just fill it in black. Or fill it in silver, for instance, which is, gives you a little bit more of a different effect. Or you can fill it in with a metallic blue, which is also another sort of really cool Batman effect. So that's one option of what you can do is literally just fill it in once you've got that shape right, fill it in. The reason I'm saying fill it in with a brush is because then you have that bit more control. So if you were to fill that in with a sponge, it's kind of going to go everywhere. But with a brush, you can fill in those lines and you can get right up into these insides that be easier. I'm going to actually do something different again. Just giving my brush a good work out there. So I'm going to do something different again. I'm going to use uh, my flat brush. And I'm going to use this split cake here. This is a beautiful split cake. It's from Chameleon. It's called Swan. Um, it's black, silver, uh, like a metallic white, and then a straight white. Um, Tag also has a split cake that's kind of similar called Magpie, but I like the Chameleon one better because it has those metallic -y colours to it, which is really cool. Okay, I'm loading up those colours. And I'm loading it up a lot because I don't really want to have to come back um, and reload because it's going to mess up my colours. Okay, I'm working my black on the outside purely because I've already got a black outline so it's going to look better. It's going to look like it was meant to be there. And all I'm going to do is with my split cake, I'm going to paint the exact same thing. but by using a split cake instead. Like so. Okay, I'm just gonna give my slip cake a quick clean. And that's only because the um, the black around the outside, so my original outline hasn't completely dried yet, um, which is for a number of reasons. The main reason is because I'm working on uh, plastic rather than skin where it absorbs and because it's really cold today. <laughs> okay, quick clean. By the way, just for those who just asked then, the reason that I wiped my brush along my arm is because there's still a tiny amount of paint on there. Because it's black, I couldn't tell um, which side was the black and which side was the white. So if I had to put it around the wrong way, it was going to mess up my colours. So just a, a little trick. Okay, 
I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to come and do the exact same thing. But on the inside. And like so. So there's just another option um, of Batman, rather than just making it all black, is making it that bit more interesting. We can then come along with either your white or silver. I'm gonna use white because you'll be able to see that a little bit better on camera. Wow, that is a dirty brush. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna use white. I would much rather use silver um, if I was painting on a child's face. But we're going to use white just because it'll show up better on camera. That's the only reason. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just give it a little bit of outlines. Um, I've met some kids that insist on Batman having eyes. You would put them there. Um, the other thing that you can do, which I think is a really, really cool little effect. Remember in primary school we used to paint birds by just doing this little... Oops, Three little ends like this. Yeah, well you can do that in the background. So just give yourself a little, few little, just as if there's um, you know, little bats flying away. The other thing that we can do is um, is actually outline your Batman. You know, say with a, a white, um, with a silver, even with a liquid glitter, it actually looks amazing if you've got a really, really steady hand. Um, and the reason that we can do that, honestly, it's just to break it up. Because when you're painting the same Batman, the same thing over and over again, it gets a bit much. Um, and it gets a little bit boring. And because Batman is one of those things that there's... It, uh, there's only so much you can do with it because it does need to be a recognisable character. So having other little fun things to do is really cool. And of course, you can always add some sparkles. I don't think there's any kids that have ever turned me down when I've asked them if they'd like sparkles. Cool, there we go. There is an awesome Batman for you. Okay, how are we doing? Are we having fun? Do we learn something from those? I know that they're really simple designs and they're ones that you probably already, you know, definitely know of, might even know how to do. Um, but I hope that these are ones that you can do with your kids as well and that these are ones that the kids can join in with. They can have a lot of fun at home. And I know that a lot of you are stuck at home, which is kind of, you know, it's getting a bit tedious, especially on a day like today when it is absolutely pouring. <laughs> um, now, just while I've got you, I wanted to show you something really special. This is a craft and go. So for people who have been asking and people who have been um, wondering about it and that sort of thing, this is a craft and go. It's, uh, we are the Australian distributors and, and New Zealand actually, Australian New Zealand distributors for craft and go. As you can see, um, it's, it uh, has uh, fold out legs that come out and they're quite sturdy now. It's all on wheels. So you can actually roll it around. It all packs up and rolls. And all of this is magnetic. So this is my mirror. That's magnetic. I have put magnets on the back of my um, cakes so that everything actually sticks on there. This is one of my um, bags. that holds a whole bunch of sparkles and that sort of thing. And I've put magnets on the back so that it clicks on and holds in place. 
It's a tiny amount of time to set up and they're just really awesome. Um, you can see it holds mass amounts of stuff and they're just really, really good. So the reason that I want to show you this one is uh, purely because at the moment for people who do buy the Craft and Goes, now they're not cheap, okay? We're not going to lie. This is definitely an investment. If you're looking to um, uh, face paint professionally or go to markets and that sort of stuff, it's an investment. It's not something to take lightly and we'd never tell you otherwise. However, for people who are asking, um, we will absolutely write you a letter that you can give to your accountant that says uh, it's a professional setup, what the cost is, um, and that it's uh, uh, from taxation reasons for the purpose of you working, which will obviously really help with the, um, the tax write-off at the moment um, and uh, will help you in your sole trader agreements. So if that's something that you need, let us know. Um, we can absolutely do that for you. Okay, let's come back over here. We'll just set back up because we promised you a rainbow butterfly. So let's get that ready. Ready and rainbow butterfly. Okay, so for rainbow butterflies, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all my, my blacks and, you know, the dark colours. We don't want any of that with, um, with rainbows. Rainbows is all about your bright colours. It's all about, um, uh, you know, being as bright and colourful as possible and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Having said that, I've absolutely seen black and white butterflies and they're stunning. But this particular one, it's a rainbow butterfly. Look at that, all that black has just come right off. That's pretty amazing actually. The purple is staying slightly, but nothing that um, some actual cleaner or some soap wouldn't get off. There we go, pretty impressed with that. Okay, so we're now gonna paint a rainbow butterfly. Now this, as I said before, this is my version of a rainbow butterfly. It's I mean, I think it's easier than your standard butterflies, but that's, you know, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, I can definitely see how it would be a little bit harder for some, but this is how I do mine. It's a bit different to what you might have seen on YouTube. Um, you've probably seen on YouTube uh, like a, a big split cake, um, with a, a sponge and kind of wiping it across and then like doing like a squeezy in motion and getting it across like that um which is cool like it's it's a it's a really really lovely way um of drawing butterflies i don't personally do my butterflies that way and the reason being is because first of all i'm not very good at that way um and also because i find that it, it looks a little bit messy um i'll show you what i'm talking about so I wet my brush, sorry, my, my sponge. Uh, I grab, I just need to grab one, a split cake. That's a 50 gram split cake, so a big one. Like that. And yeah, there, this is the standard YouTube rainbow butterfly, just to remind you. So I'd wet my sponge, I'd wipe it across my colors like so. And there's a few different ways you can either put your sponge this way, so that way it's, you know, all coming up. But you would sponge it across like this. It takes a little bit of kind of um, practice of squeezing in one finger up or two fingers up here to get that point. And then you would do the other side. And like so and then underneath um, and then you would grab uh, a brush you grab a nice outline color um, generally you see them in black and white I'm gonna use blue because I like blue it's pretty and then you would see it getting outlined like so 
and like so. Um, I don't really like this way, nothing against it, but as you can see, it's kind of messy. Um, you know, this outsidey part, you've got to get it pretty much perfect to look any good. Um, I think it's, uh, I don't know, I, I guess a little bit old fashioned now, just in, you know, the, the actual technique. And I think that there's potentially better ways and better things that you can do. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we're going to use a, uh, a one inch split cake of your choice. I personally have got a rainbow four from Tag, and this is a flabbergasted rainbow from a Diamond FX. They're pretty similar. Okay, I'm also using uh, just a flat brush. This particular one is a, a three quarter flat brush from Global Colors, but any will do. Now I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna spray my brush. The only reason I'm doing that is because my water's gone really dirty. And uh, if I use my dirty water, then I'm gonna get uh, dirty in my brush and then my, my rainbows won't look as bright and blah, blah. Anyway, so spraying my brush, making sure it's not saturated, but um, wet enough to get some nice colors happening. For those who are new to split cakes, by the way, you want your um, your brush to flow over the colors. You don't want it to be saturated. You don't want it to be kind of dripping. You don't want it to feel sticky and tacky. You just want it to kind of flow nicely. And over time, you'll get really used to that. Okay, so we'll start over here. So I'm going to start with, that's just a little bit wet still. So I'm going to start by just determining where my butterfly is going to go. And this is going to kind of be like my placement. So for me, I'm going to paint it um, kind of coming up here across the eyes, like kind of this way coming up. And then underneath the cheeks. Which means that my first stroke is going to be about here and I'll measure that out to make sure that I've got it nice and even on the other side okay like so okay so the stroke that I'm doing it's actually really simple but it looks complicated okay so don't get you know too stressed about it what we're doing is a shape like this now if I do lots of little shapes like that I can actually do that in any direction and I can go around the corners and um, I can do all sorts of things with it. So that's the shape that I'm looking for. It's just a tiny little C shape. It's, it's not as complicated as it looks, but it looks beautiful. So I light up my brush and because I'm looking for that, that butterfly shape, which is going to kind of go up like this, it's going to point up. And I'm going to keep that picture in my head. And I'm drawing my little C's. And then I'm coming back down and around and lining it out. Then I'm going to come underneath and draw my butterfly wings. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I've got one, two, three to my top part. One, two, three to my top part. And then I come back down. And I am having to sort of take my brush away to see where that shape needs to end up. Um, so that my, my shape does end up you know, in the right direction. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit more color now because I'm moving my red, and we like the red, the red's pretty. I'm gonna do the same thing underneath. So I'm just doing these little strokes and painting it down and around. Like so. Okay, now because we're painting on um, um, a, a mat, I'll drum it up in the centre. Normally you wouldn't have to because there's a nose in the way. Um, I'm also, just for the sake of being a little bit perfectionist, I'm just going to um, bring a little bit more red over here just because it's very clear that I um, 
mm, that my red went a little bit muddy at that point. So I've cleaned off my cake. I've got a nice clean brush. And I'm just gonna give that little bit extra red just around here. Like so, and there we go. Um, it's definitely not as messy. You see my hands nice and clean, somewhat. Um, whereas with sponge, it goes all over my fingers. I think it looks a little bit more impressive. Um, there's a lot more that you can kind of do with it. And especially, I mean, I use the same colour, but you can absolutely come with this centre part, say with another slip cake, so you get those two vibrant colours happening. Um, we then always need to add the, uh, the butterfly body and antennae. Now when you're drawing butterflies, especially um, the uh, antennae part, which is, you know, those things over the head, you want it to be as pretty and petite as possible. Every now and then you'll see these big, you know, this beautiful butterfly and then the butterfly has these big gigantic wings or these big gigantic, it, it takes it away. Okay, so try and make it nice and neat and little and pretty and we'll find that it will just add that little bit extra to your butterfly. So I'm actually going to use a tiny little brush like this. I'm just going to dab um, my, my brush along. So I haven't even painted it, I've literally just given it a dab like so. Um, just for the sake of being pretty, I'm going to maybe add a few little dots underneath. And then I'm going to use some very, very pretty and very small little antennae coming up the top. Um, I did them both facing the same way. I think that's a, a little bit of a, um, uh, I don't know, a bit of a, a, a tradition at the moment is to have them going the same way. It's just a prettiness thing, it's not, you know. But yeah, you, know, you have them matching the centered, maybe like a heart or one slightly taller than the other or, you know, whatever you like. From here, you can absolutely leave it like that. I mean, that's enough. And especially if you're painting lots of kids or in a hurry, like that is absolutely ready to go. But if you wanted to, you can give it a few more outlines around here. You can make sure that, um, you know, it's really obvious as to where that outline was and um, match it up to the centre. You can then, remember how we did like that second lot in the centre here? So we can outline that one too, just so that it's really, really clear that there is actually double wings happening. If you wanted to, I kind of like giving, um, if I have room, sometimes maybe like a little twirl at the bottom. Sometimes that's just a really nice effect just to add, just to have that little bit extra. Um, you could add the, the butterfly, I think they're called eyes actually, but these little circle things that quite often butterflies have on their wings for that little bit more realism. It can be really nice to whatever your particular um, contrasting colour that you've used, for me it's red. So I've got lots of nice red on the outside. Don't forget the lips. You can do the lips in a rainbow as well if you wanted to. Like so. Maybe just a little bit extra over here. And then of course, lots of sparkles. And there we go. There's my version of a rainbow butterfly. Hope you liked that, hope you had fun. Um, please let us know what else you'd like me to teach, what else you'd like to learn. Um, I don't know, is there particular products that obviously you can't get here in person, so maybe we can show you via a video if there's particular things that you want us to show you how to do it on camera, how to, how to use them on camera. Um, is there designs that you struggle with is there designs that you'd like to know how to do them a bit faster? Um, that's probably a speciality of mine, 
is people, our customers will give us um, a design that, you know, is taking them just that bit too long. Um, and what I can do is I can break it up and make it so that it's a lot quicker and a lot faster for you to do. Um, whether that might be, I don't know, as an example, like a Spider-Man before, maybe removing parts of it or, you know, other ways of doing things that will be that little bit quicker. Um, is there, geez, I don't know, you know, is there different techniques that you want to learn? Um, please tell us, tell us what you'd like because that's what we're here for. And frankly, we are more than happy to take your suggestions because we're running out of ideas of our own. <laughs> okay, I hope that you liked that. Please, please continue to support us. Um, please buy your face paints from thefacepaintshop.com. That's up here, thefacepaintshop.com. Everything that I've used today is on our website. We absolutely still offer pickup delivery as well, and we can do contactless delivery if you would prefer. We have uh, parcels going out every single day, and they haven't been anywhere near as slow as what we've um, heard rumors of overseas and that sort of stuff. It's been pretty good. Um, we have almost everything in stock. I believe there's still a sale on at the moment, which is exciting. Don't quote me on that. I believe there is, though. Um, but please continue to support us because we, we need our customers at the time. Thefacepaintshop.com. I'm Michelle. Uh, let us know what else you'd like to learn. Hope you're doing okay out there at home. And we'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.